So my family loves to go camping and we like to have a campfire. I recently realized though that now that I'm older, I don't love smelling like smoke through the whole camping trip and I don't love leaving a dirty campfire ring everywhere we camp. Today, I wanna teach you how you can avoid that by making a candle pot. So a candle pot was first introduced to my wife when she was on a Grand Canyon river trip. You can't have fires in the Grand Canyon, but people bring these candle pots as an alternative. They're pretty awesome. Okay, so here's the supplies that you need. You need a pot. I used a five liter aluminum um, Dutch oven. I ordered mine on eBay. The reason I use this Dutch oven rather than just a normal pot is because it's thicker, so it's not gonna dent when it's bouncing around in the back of my truck. I also, you want a lid on it. This isn't the original lid. It's super thin aluminum, but it will work because the lid is just used to put the fire out. You also need wax. This is a 10 pound block. I just got it at Hobby Lobby because it was on sale. It was about 20 bucks. I have an old pot that was from a thrift store. That's to melt my wax and then cardboard, which we will roll up and use like a wick in our candle pot. So here we go. So inside the pot, one thing to watch for is you want kind of a vertical um, edge to the pot. So pretty much straight up and down. You don't want one of those curved pots. Uh, that's not gonna, it's gonna make it harder to pack the cardboard into there. And so you want the cardboard to come, you know, maybe like a half an inch below the top of the pot because then that's where your fire is gonna be, but you also want room for your lid to be able to put that fire out. So my pot is almost five inches deep. So I'm gonna cut my cardboard to be about four or four and a half inches. So I went ahead and did that already. I cut a bunch of cardboard strips and I just have these long strips. I'm gonna roll them up and pack them inside the pot. So to do this, I'm just gonna take the cardboard, kind of roll it up. It doesn't have to look pretty because I'm gonna be burning it anyway, eventually. So once I have it rolled up, I set it in the pot, it kind of unrolls itself and kind of fits around the edges like that. What I'm gonna do on my cardboard, some of these have tape on them. I'm gonna pull off all the tape so it's uh, as absorbent as possible because again, this cardboard is acting like a wick for the wax that will go in there. So just keep doing that over and over and you'll get this kind of circle of cardboard in there. So while I'm doing this, I found that it's kind of useful to maybe uh, push out, kind of untwist that cardboard every once in a while to kind of fill in these gaps. You want some gaps in there because that's gonna be where the wax fills in, but I just want it to make it so it's kind of as full of cardboard as possible instead of just a bunch of holes. Also, because my pot curves up at the very edge, I made this outside piece slightly shorter um, to kind of uh, accommodate for that curve. So for my last little roll of cardboard, it's pretty tight in there. So I have to kind of roll it pretty, uh, pretty snugly. I, uh, I went and bent this over the edge of a table so it was more flexible. And so I can kind of get a nice tight roll on this. I've had a lot of practice rolling from rolling those posters that we sell. Perfect, there we go. So that is packed full. The next step is to fill it with wax. So I need to melt my wax over here. I don't really wanna do it in my kitchen because I don't want to accidentally spill wax all over. So I think I'm gonna do it out here in the driveway with a camp stove. So the next step is we are going to break this wax up, melt it in our old pot and pour it into the candle pot. Okay, step one, break the wax. So we're gonna start with just a little bit of wax, not all 10 pounds, because we need to first get wax at the very bottom of the candle pot because the cardboard's gonna try to float. So we wanna pour a little bit of wax in. We're doing about a quarter of our block. Then we're gonna put a weight on top of the candle pot so the cardboard can kind of soak up some of that wax and kind of wait till it solidifies. So just for fun, I sped up the video here. 
I didn't want to put the camp stove on full blast, so I was kind of doing it at a warm temperature. Anyway, the wax melted pretty effectively. The problem was when I went to pour it in, uh, it's hard to pour out of a big pot like this. I didn't want to burn myself with melted wax, and so I took a little while to get it in there without splashing it all over the place. So again, I'm just filling up the very bottom of the candle pot here. I pushed it down with this with this kind of wood with um, this is petrified wood on top of it to make it heavy. I found out afterwards that I should have packed the cardboard tighter. So then I melted more wax and I poured it on top of that after the bottom layer of wax had solidified. I filled it up all the way to the top and you can see these little bubbles are coming out. This isn't actually boiling, that's just the air filling in around the gaps of the cardboard. I, you can see here the cardboard's actually floating a little bit and that's where I ran into the problem. The cardboard shouldn't float. If you pack it tight enough, the cardboard will stay at the bottom of the pot. I didn't know that at the time, so I kind of propped it down by putting a big heavy rock on it, thinking that that would solidify and keep it all down. So again, afterwards, I had to come back and pack more cardboard in to keep the cardboard as tight as possible inside the candle box so it doesn't float. Out in the morning, I came out to look at it and you can see a lot of that wax kind of uh, went down. It was absorbed into the cardboard. So I melted a little bit more wax just to fill it up all the rest of the way. Um, you probably could have left it and it would have been fine, but I filled it up kind of as, as far as possible. To light it, the first time you light it is a little bit harder than later. I lit it in a couple spots and let that fire spread and it soon kind of filled the whole top of the candle pot. This is where I came back and I filled in those gaps. After the wax had melted and that cardboard floated up, I took little bits of cardboard and filled in all of those gaps that I could. I shoved them down in there when the wax was melted so it made it really tight, as tight as it could be, so it wouldn't float up anymore. And it worked great. The candle pot is awesome. So after a couple hours of use with the candle pot, you're gonna be burning up some of that wax. You can see there's not a lot of smoke coming out, but to recharge it, all you do is put a new piece of wax on the top and that will melt into those cracks in the cardboard. You can use old candles. I just used some scraps from the wax when I first made the candle pot. I ended up using about five pounds of wax to first make this. To put it out, all you do is put the lid on. So it's super easy to make a candle pot, lots of benefits to it. Uh, we've used it a lot this year, surprisingly more than we thought we would. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And I'd love to hear how it goes when you try to make your own candle pot. Thanks for watching.